in sight. There should be no cannabis in sight. The last thing you want to do is if you're a patient or a caregiver or you have the smell of cannabis anywhere around you, you are at risk, whether you like it or not. You still stand that risk. The last thing you would want to do, even if you weren't being raided, the last thing you want to do is to keep anything out and about in sight around any children. And then, on top of that, have someone knock on your door that you have to let in. It's just not good. When I know my grandchildren are coming over, everything gets put away and locked up. And when I go to sleep at night, nothing is left. So make sure that you keep your homes tidy, things put away, locked up, out of reach of children. Because the last thing you do want is your children. You know, we talk about this. If cannabis was grown in your backyard and your child plucked off a, a bud and ate it, they wouldn't die and they wouldn't get high. They would just get a little fuzzy feeling, like probably if they ate a few dandelions. A plant is a plant. If you're going to eat it raw, you might have a feeling from it. You can't get high from eating a raw bud. It does help you medically, though. We've had people just... I've uh, talked about a few of them. Uh, Ted's 300 pounds, couldn't walk. He's got two titanium knees, and you know he'd be wobbling like this, and then all of a sudden he's like a butterfly, and he's like, guess what? I, I learned a new way, and I'm, he says, I just eat it like uh, chew tobacco, and I keep it in there, and I just chew on it, and it's helping me so much, I can't believe it. And it could be that raw cannabis has six times the more active ingredient than if you smoke it or burn it. So it, it's helping him. So it's unfortunate that the raw cannabis, but the thing you've got to be real careful is the medibles, the cookies, the brownies, and you can't forget about them because kids will get into that stuff. So you have got to keep that locked up and tight and put away because medibles can have a really, really bad impact um, on our children and even ourselves if they're not used properly. Uh, you definitely can get a medicated effect from raw cannabis if there's a fat in your stomach. I actually had an issue once where I had a uh, peanut butter sandwich with the peanut oil and it actually got very medicated off of it. You mean just a raw bud? Just a raw bud. See, I've, I've tried it, Mish has tried it. Yeah. So, but if you have oil. If you have to have like either like a milk fat or some sort of fat, oil, olive oil, like you could actually put rock in. I wouldn't recommend it because it would cause digestive upset, but you could. Hmm. Well, that's interesting to know. I'm going to have to go drink a shake and then try it and see. <laughs> yeah, we learned something. That's good. Yeah. But I mean, so far, you know, it's. Uh, is it as strong as what you feel normally yeah, like, or is it more of a tingling? Not, like not like a. Not like a the sensation is like a tingly, I felt it to be like a tingly feeling. Yeah. Yeah. My dog gets pretty tingly. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of dogs, this is really unfortunate, and here is just world news. One of the veterinarians who was really working to um, bring cannabis and um, get the Porsche, uh, the dose correct for uh, animals because he treated his dog, passed away today at 36. So one of the only veterinarians who was working on, that we know of, that was working on can, um, cannabis for our pets, passed away, didn't say why, so that was unfortunate. The other thing that happened was that community service thing, the welfare program. Yes, That's here's upsetting. some more updates, the community service. If you are on any state welfare program, you now have to do community service. I don't know how it's defined. I don't know how people who don't have vehicles or the resources to get where they gotta go and maybe you need childcare and all of this stuff. It can be very confusing. But just know that they, I believe it was passed or it's going it's, to It's do going that. to the next portion, which is I think the Senate and the House. Uh, but, but it, it passed, passed through a couple of committees. Yeah. Too, if I'm not mistaken. The other thing that passed was the medical marijuana on unemployment, uh, unemployment benefits. So that's also got to go to the next step, but that has also passed the first step, I believe. So this is the deal. If you are on unemployment and you apply for a job, um, if you test positive, then you do not, you lose your unemployment benefits. Yes. So if you're actively looking for a job while you're on unemployment and uh, they report you that it, they didn't hire, that you lose all your benefits. 
So that's something. Most individuals don't go for job interviews where they know they have to test and test <coughs> positive. But to get um, involved. Get involved. Call your politicians. Oh. Call your yeah. politicians. Well, it's true. Seriously. If you don't call, they're just going to pass these happen. things without anyone there. And, you know, it's still at the level of the city councils. We realize that going to the council meetings that we need to be actively involved with the city in each one of these cities to develop them and their understanding and acceptance of cannabis in their community. Like I told Carmanos today, whether you agree with it or not, it's here. It's in our community and it's in our country and it's only developing and the technology is advancing and you should, for your patient's sake, stay on top of these things. So, quite so. Yeah. But, um, anyway, um, I think we're almost done. Brian Crane wasn't he, isn't here. I, I uh, had put him on the agenda. And do we? Well, here also, Curtis. I just want to say one thing. The last couple of days, I'll be calling the governor's office and giving them heck over this whole situation with protective services they had the Green family because back in. Early 80s, I went something, through something similar with my children. Oh, it kind of backfired on my wife. I got, I got lucky with a good referee. She said it didn't matter what I did. I was a better parent. I got full custody and so on. But she tried to say that I was using marijuana around the kids and stuff. But I called, I called the governor's office and let his aides know. Every morning I'm letting them know that they need to do something about this medical marijuana issue and the Department of uh, Protective Services. Our police aren't there to help the government take kids away from their families. Oh, it was awful. Not to interrupt you, but the video of the police woman had almost like her hand on her gun, you know, moving up. Well, it's like, yeah. this is insane. Well, they're not there to, they're not there to take, help the government take away our kids. They're, they're supposed to be there to serve and protect. And in my opinion, when it comes to a, I have, a, I have another couple here that has been dealing with the Department of uh, Social Services. They had been investigated for the same issue, medical marijuana, and I've kind of Give them some guidance. They're here tonight, and I just want you to know our government does. They need to hear about it. They do. You it know. wouldn't hurt. Even about the CPS situation with Stephen Maria Green to call. I say go right to the governor, and if they don't take the calls, then you go down from there. Why go to the bottom to the top? I know there's protocol, right, but this is a gov. This is an issue that our governor needs to set the standards for all of these departments to dig their face into a book like this, or at least the act and understand the rights of the people. That's the problem. They're, they don't want, they, they ignore it. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. They're hearing, but I am going to stop by uh, the governor's office uh, in Lansing and let them know that I, you know, I, want, I told my wife to know what his decision was. And I want to return the phone call. Good. So I will well, let us know for sure if you get one. Okay. Um, I'm going to back up. We usually talk about this, but we just don't even really talk about it in the beginning anymore. When we first started out four years ago, we were not a 501c3, and we could educate about cannabis cultivating and doing things like that. And then so many people started opening schools and shops and when we um, applied for our 501c3, there were two, two things that the government told us we really could not do. One was to dispense any cannabis, provide safe, ac safe access, and to cultivate, um, ed to educate on cultivating. So we've been real good with that. We never did dispense, never, even as the Down River Community Compassion Club when we started out here, we never dispensed. Um, I'm going to forget where I was. No, I didn't. So um, if things were a bit different, and it seemed like there was a more openness in or feeling that people could talk. You won't find us talking about wheeling, dealing cannabis and this and that here. 
It doesn't mean that you can't come here in hopes to network, to find a caregiver if you're a patient. Someone said to me today, someone new, you know, I, I, it, there's no place that gives you instructions to, to learn how to find a good caregiver. And I'm like, well, you're, I guess you're right about that. It's just something you do. You, you, you network or you know someone who knows someone. Now, we almost all know someone who knows someone. It didn't used to be that way, but we're a little more free to talk coming here to the meetings. You meet someone, they know someone, you meet someone. So we used to, to do this occasionally, and, and we don't do it often anymore, but can I see a, a raise of hands for the caregivers that are in the room who would like to help a patient? Are there any caregivers in the room that would like to help a patient? So patients, if you are here and you would like to network, it doesn't mean that you're going to transact cannabis. What it means is you should introduce yourself. Never be afraid to introduce yourself to a raised hand and never be afraid to ask questions. So if you want to ask them questions, talk to them. Don't sign papers right away. We take a, It's best here if you find out patient caregiver, where do you live? Do you have a phone number? When you leave here, pick up the phone and then you start to network and talk with caregivers and patients. So this person asked me, is there a P or a C? And I'm like, I know of an organization that used to do that. I think Brighton used to put a, a have buttons for P and C, but then uh, they, they they don't do that anymore, but so um, they were going to give us the buttons at one point, and I don't know if that's helpful or not, but just know there are patients and caregivers. How many people are patients in this room? How many are caregivers? <laughs> so you see, there, there are patients and caregivers, so don't be afraid to talk, and, but don't be real fast to sign with um, a caregiver unless you've talked to them and really understand. And, and if you don't know what those questions are, well, then you can ask someone, you know, what to, to look for. You can so. ask any one of the officers, that's for sure. So. Um, one thing I always forget, and I know that GFS wishes I wouldn't, and I do too, <laughs> and they were so nice to do this as a nonprofit. Every time we have an event or uh, cops, anything we need, we go to GFS, and they'd always say, do you have your card? I'm like, no, I don't have time to fill one out either. So it took me... Quite a while, when we had our 501c3, I said, you know, I really need to fill this out. And uh, she said, yes, you do, and you need to get it out to everyone, because I only asked for 100. She goes, honey, you're not going to get any check with 100. You need to get like 5,000. I'm like, I'll try. <laughs> but this is really a good cause. Everyone in our organization is a volunteer. No one takes a paycheck. No one ever has. Um, so we, and we don't dispense cannabis. And things like that. So we raise money, um, like churches and schools do, on fundraising things like GFS and Bingo and the Royal Oak. It wasn't for raffle, it was to be able to hold Bingo just like a church and a school does. So we that's that next step to be able to do that. So if anyone shops at GFS, I forget these every week and I said I'm going to put them out. Yes it is, it's Gordon Food Service. If you haven't shopped there, they're great. Uh, they have some bulk stuff, but please take one. I'm going to have Mish, or if someone wants to, thank you. Um, and he has our number right on there, and thank you. Or you can give them to Mish if anyone wants one. I always forget to hand them out, and I said, you know, by the end of the year, I at least have to give the badge that they gave us. So thank you, uh, and remember us when you're at GFS. Does anyone have any questions? We didn't, we didn't cover a lot of uh, medical. Let's see, we're um, talk about memberships. Pardon? Talk about memberships. You want to talk about memberships? I'll talk about memberships. We have two uh, different memberships. One is a charter membership, and it was open to anyone, any time of the year. And then we realized that that made it difficult in working with our new charter members and um, any of the needs or developing volunteers because it was just scattered. So what we decided to do it, on the membership committee, actually charter members were part of this decision, was to close our charter memberships and open them for 30 days um, once a year. And so we did that this last year. And then when we did that, we had a lot of people who wanted to be charter members throughout, and we really couldn't do that because it was written into our bylaws and changed. So we have a general membership, we always have, but we never really promoted it because many people wanted to be a charter member. So we do have a general member um, ship. The, uh,
and you can fill the information out on here. And you get one of the guides included with your job general membership. You get put into our email system so you get all the updates and events. And um, so we really appreciate it. And um, you are uh, very welcome. Those who are general members, I will tell you our membership is limited in charter members. So we have written into the bylaws that we will have 100, no more than 100 charter members or 10% of our organization. That way we can spend time in developing the organization and the members that are there. So as a general member, you will be the first to opt for charter membership in any open spot once a year on June 1st. So it's, a, it's also a great way to uh, save your spot for a charter membership. So that's here. Also, the community garden. I want to share with you, we have a couple minutes. I know Dr. Newman still has to see some of you. So we talked about Romulus. Um, when we applied for gaming, we didn't apply just for raffles or this or that. Well, we did. We applied for a millionaire's party. And as a 501c3, we're allowed to do four of those a year. And we applied. We got um, paperwork back from the state saying that we needed to be recognized by one of the cities as a legitimate, as recognized as a nonprofit for gaming purposes. So we went to Romulus because that's where we were founded. We have a community garden there and we have been before them. Monday night will be the third time. I, I was there, I think Mish, we even hired Matt Abel at one round to come and sit and listen when Romulus was deciding on their moratorium and presenting to the community about medical marijuana and all of the things that they were talking about. So we've been really involved in Romulus, but the, uh, we still haven't been able to get a vote. So it's sort of like uh, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz when you go before the wizard, he, you said, I brought the broom, and he says, now you need to go get the slippers. That's how we're feeling exactly with Romulus. It's like, okay, well, we got the boot here, you know, ready, or the, you know, I'm just kidding. We're, we don't need Romulus anymore because Royal Oak, in one night, one visit, a city that we have not been active in, approved us. So, we're still going back to Romulus Monday night. Don't give up that. Oh, we're not. Because Romulus will see us and we put right on our agenda, we want to vote this time. But with that, we saw the city council and we saw who approved and we saw who didn't. And we saw who wanted to learn more. And one of the city council members, Eva Webb, who was trying to call for the vote that night, but she sort of got shut down, um, knew her place now too, but she came out to our community garden and she checked it out and she was like, wow, this is great. We didn't even know this was here. It's the, I think it's the only community garden in Romulus. She gave us a $5 donation. She took some pictures. This is the kind of person, people that we need to see um, in our, those seats at the city council meetings. Those that are open-minded to us and, and what we enacted in 2008 and not force their own thoughts or opinions on us. So um, recognize who's sitting in them seats. Just like if I lived in Royal Oak and I was watching on TV, I would say to myself, I will never vote for that woman. Not because she didn't vote yes for us, because I saw someone up there who voted on something out of her own opinion that had nothing to do with the vote. The vote was whether we were legitimate, not her opinion of whether she liked cannabis. So then her opinion is going to intermingle with every decision that she makes in the community based on her own feeling. She'd be gone if I lived in that city because I'd be rallying for someone who listened and understood the need because Wait, the one even backed up, dear Don, and he goes, and when he heard her, he goes, wait, let me get this straight here, because I want to make sure I'm not voting. I'm not voting to, like, endorse them, right? We're here just to accept that they are legitimate, right? Right. I vote yes. He got it. So in seeing, even in Romulus, those that just didn't want to vote because they just didn't want it, it's wrong. We're a legitimate organization and it presented and the lawyer even said your paperwork is legitimate there is no question there then where is the vote 
So get active and you can watch them on TV. Watch your city council meetings on TV and watch what's happening, how they're voting and, and why. Not just how, but why they voted on what they did. Does it make reason or stand to reason? So, and some active. of the stupid stuff they spend stupid. time it's on. Just some of it is stupid stuff. <laughs> but anyways, get involved, stay involved, and that's how you will have things happen in your way better more so than for things you don't, the ways you don't want it to go. So I think I am done. We usually have a raffle at the end of the night. Uh, how many more people have to see Dr. Newman? Oh, just so one more. So we're about finished up at the right time. I'm on our raffle tonight. We have uh, our coffee cups, which are great. And uh, everyone always says, these are nice cups. They really hold a lot of coffee. And they do. And our book, as I promised, for those who considered buying one tonight, I told you to wait. We'll see if we dry in the raffle and some um, incense. We're going to do three raffles. So this I pulled out of the bag so many times. I'm like, I'm just going to bring it up here and raffle it. But it's really a cool flag. I 